hello coders i hope you are coding well in the previous video we created the dashboard for our customers and we created search products by name api in today's video we will create the functionality to add product in the cart so let's get started before creating the api we need to create a dto and we can right click on this dto package and here we need to choose new java class and we can name this dto as add product in cart dto and we will add at the rate data annotation on this class and here we need two properties first one is private long user id and then we can duplicate this line and we can replace the name with product id after this we need to create the repository for our cart items entity and we can right click on this repository package and here we need to create a new java class and we can name this repository as cart item repository and here we need to choose interface and here we will add the annotation of at the rate repository and we need to extend this repository from jpa repository and here we need to mention the entity and after this we need to mention the data type of our primary key after this let's go to the services package and here we need to create a new package and let's name this package as cart and in this package we need to create a java class and we need to name this as cart service and this should be an interface and after this we will create an other class in the same package and this time we need to name this cart service impl and we need to annotate this class with the annotation of at the rate service and we need to write here implements statement and then we need to write cart service in this cart service implementation we need to inject the order repository and we need to inject the user repository as well and at the end we need to inject the cart items repository let's import these And here we can start writing our method which will be a public method and this will return a response entity and let's name this method as add product to cart and in the params we should accept add product in cart DTO here in this method first of all we need to get the current active order of our user and for that we can create a new variable and let's name this as active order and here we can call the order repository dot find by user id and status and we need to pass the user id which we can get from add product card dto and after that we need to pass the order status and we know that the active card should have a status of pending after this we will create a variable and let's pass here cart items and let's name this as optional cart items and we will call our cart items repository dot find by product id and order id and user id and we will pass add product in cart dto dot get product id and then we need to pass the order id and we can get this from order id dot get id let's import this order and after order id we need to pass the user id which we can get from add product in card dto dot get user id now let's go to the order repository and create this find by user id and status method the return type of this method will be an order 
and the query should be find by user id and status and in the params we need to mention long user id and then order status now let's go back to the cart service implementation and we need to create this method in our cart item repository so let's open our cart item repository and here this method will return one optional cart items and the query should be find by product id and order id and user id and in the params we need to mention long product id long order id and then long user id let's update this to capital l now let's go back to the card service implementation and here we need to add the if condition and we need to check optional cart items dot is present and if this is true then we need to return one error because we already have this product in our cart so we will write return statement and we will return a response entity dot status and we need to return http status dot conflict and then in the body we can return null after this we will write else statement and here we need to create one optional variable of type product and let's name this as optional product and we will call our product repository dot find by id and here we need to pass add product in card dto dot get product id now let's inject product repository as well and import this class and after this let's duplicate this line and update the type to user and let's name this as optional user and here we need to call user repository dot find by id and we need to pass user id now we will add one if condition and we will check if optional product dot is present and if optional user dot is present then we will write the next implementation otherwise we will return a response entity and in the status we will return not found and in the body we will return user or product not found in this if condition we will create one new cart item and let's name this as cart and let's initialize with the new cart items and now we can start putting the details of our cart and we need to set the product first in the cart and we can get this product from optional product dot get after this we need to set the price so we can call cart dot set price and we can get this price from optional product dot get dot get price after the price we need to set the quantity and as you know by default quantity will be one when user is adding the item in the cart first time after this in the cart we need to set the user and we can get this user from optional user dot get and at the end in the cart we need to set the order and we can pass here our active order after this let's create new cart item and let's name this as updated cart and here we need to call the cart repository dot save and we need to pass our cart after this we need to update the details of the order and to do that we can call active order dot set amount and here we need to get the amount first from the active order and then we need to sum it with cart dot 
get price now let's duplicate this line and let's update the setter to set amount and here we need to update this to get total amount and after this in the active order we need to set the cart items and to do that we can call active order dot get cart items and then we need to call the add method and we need to pass here our cart now let's call the order repository dot save method and let's pass our active order and here we will write the return statement and we will return a response entity dot status and here we will pass http status dot created and then we need to call the body method and in the body we will pass the cart now let's copy this and mention in the cart service and after this we need to create the controller for the cart and for that we can right click on this customer package and we can choose new java class and here we need to name this controller as cart controller and we need to annotate this controller with at the rate rest controller and then we need to add the annotation for request mapping and the path for this controller will be slash api slash customer and the last annotation we need is at the rate required augs constructor after this let's inject our cart service and here we can start writing our endpoint which will be a public method and this will return response entity and let's name this as add product to cart and then we need to mention at the rate request body which should be add product in cart DTO after this let's annotate this method with the annotation of post mapping and the path should be slash cart now let's write a return statement and here we need to call the cart service dot add product to cart and we need to pass here add product in cart dto now let's run our application as you can see we got one error no property status found in the type order and to fix this error we need to go to the order repository and here we need to replace this status with order status because the property name is order status in our order entity now let's go to the cart service implementation and let's update the method call and let's run our application again and now as you can see our application is up on port 8080 without any errors and that's it for this video in the next video we will call this api from our angular application and we will create the api to get our cart